Item Number SCP-211 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Because of the suburban location of SCP-211, the surrounding neighborhood has been vacated through intentional introduction of pollutive industry and redistricting to promote NIMBY sentiment. In addition, the property surrounding SCP-211 is currently under Foundation management, and an armed guard has been stationed in the buildings. Unauthorized personnel entering the area are to be terminated on site. A series of explosive charges has been set within SCP-211 and is to be examined every days for degradation. Should SCP-211 become overtly hostile or neutralization is otherwise requested, it is to be terminated by detonating these charges simultaneously. To avoid inadvertent activation of SCP-211's defense mechanisms, extraction of SCP-211-1 should take place at a rate of fewer than pages per hour. Description SCP-211 is a two-story building located in an abandoned district of Indiana. Records from undisclosed archives heavily suggest that the building was originally a middle-class dwelling belonging to G.S., since deceased of natural cause. Since then, all furnishings have disappeared, save standard light fixtures and a radiator, pictured above. Note that several of these light switches have not been discovered, rendering them useless. Additionally, the building's topography has been nearly completely covered with an estimated sheets of paper, hereafter collectively designated as SCP-211-1. Given these facts, SCP-211 itself is in remarkably poor condition. Severe mold and grime contamination are threatening to collapse a large section of the second floor, and the attempted May 4th demolition has left a large hole in the south wall of the building. Recovered sheets of SCP-211-1 may be of various aspect and origins. Blank, depicting various images, ripped pages from books, most often encyclopedias or novels, printouts from the internet, etc. The paper may be of any color. In fact, the above picture is of the only hallway in which all sheets are printed on white paper. Entire stacks of paper have been discovered in the building's basement, whose individual sheets bear little or no relation to each other. Their only real identifying characteristic is that individual sheets' edges are unusually sharp, and that should a portion of SCP-211-1 be removed, more sheets appear from unknown origin, as replacement. Research is pending, but so far, individually. SCP-211-1's constituent parts seem to have little purpose, beyond and defense. Document 211-01 SCP status for SCP-211 was established after the building was condemned and scheduled for demolition on the 4th of May, 2000, when the building attacked the team hereafter labeled Incident Zero. The following is an interview of E.R., one of four survivors, conducted by Dr. Spinoza. Begin Log Dr. Spinoza, please state your name and occupation. Interviewee E.R., employed at construction. Well, former employee. Can't exactly do my job with one crippled leg, now can I? Dr. Spinoza, my sympathies. Please discuss the events involving the attempted destruction of Data Expunged. R. Well, we, construction that is, were commissioned to destroy that thing, so we set about finding the best way to do it. We pretty much ruled out undermining for some reason. Something to do Data Expunged. Main thing is management decides to just use a couple of bulldozers to level the thing. Dr. Spinoza. Was there any action on the part of the building before you attempted demolition? R. Not really. We went in there, after all, making tests and all that. Found the mold, joked about all that paper all over the place. Only thing that really happened before we started was... Yeah. When we were in the basement and someone else, I forget who, started ripping pages from the wall, just to check how bad the mold was. Big stack of the stuff suddenly drops from the ceiling, out of nowhere, on top of the guy and he gets a nice bunch of paper cuts. Thing that got us, though? His gear was all cut up as all hell. I mean, clothing, hat, glasses, what have you. All nicked up. Had a big damn gouge in his glasses. Damn good thing he was wearing those glasses, I tell you. 
Dr. Spinoza. And then? R. Well, we didn't like being in a big house of knives, you know? So we got him out of there. Other than that, besides, well, you know, nothing else happened. Dr. Spinoza. And on May 4th. R. Well, we had everything set up and started driving a pair of bulldozers towards the house. When all of a sudden, all that paper on that one wall, outside, right? Well, it all just falls off by itself. Now, I should tell you, that day there wasn't a breeze in the air at all. So we thought that, well, the building's destroying itself and stuff, and we decide to help it along. And all of a sudden, there's a big rumble, one you can hear over the bulldozers. And all that paper flies into the air by itself and tears up everything in sight. End of interview. End log. Document 211-02. Subsequent to Incident 0, testing was taken to determine the responsiveness of SCP-211. D-Class personnel were issued a video camera in order to interact with SCP-211 in various ways. Video Log 1. Subject. D-19905 ordered to approach and explore SCP-211. Result. No response. D-19905 interacted with SCP-211-1 without threat. Building map of first floor made with camera footage. Video Log 2. Subject. D-19905 ordered to approach and extract a sheet of SCP-211-1. Result. No response. Page appears to be... Video Log 3. Subject. D-19905 ordered to approach and extract a pile of SCP-211-1 near SCP-211's entrance. Result. Before extracting the target, D-19905 hesitates and examines a large poster on the wall near it. When questioned, D-19905 remarks that it's a painting that he made while incarcerated at and proceeds to pick it up without incident. When D-19905 picks up the target, a pile of SCP-211-1 falls over, landing on him. D-19905 emerges, suffering lacerations to arms, legs, and face, but manages to extract the collection from SCP-211. Video Log 4 Subject D-19905 ordered to approach SCP-211 and explore second floor. Result D-19905 enters building via Incident Zero Hole without incident. Upon entering contaminated area, D-19905 steps on a weakened part of the floor, which collapses. D-19905 exits building with a broken leg. Well, at least we know we can destroy it if we need to. Dr. Spinoza Video Log 5 Subject D-21938 issued a pack of matches and ordered to light a sheet of SCP-211-1 within SCP-211 on fire. Result. Data expunged. Remains removed from door, but main entrance to SCP-211 is now blocked, leaving the Incident Zero hole as the only entrance. Let's not try that one again, alright? I mean, ugh. Dr. Spinoza. Addendum 211-01 Since collection of SCP-211-1 has begun, several specific books have become identified as their origin. Examples of these are as follows. A 19 copy of Hitler's Mein Kampf, found in an undisclosed public library. A Java data structures book, printed in 19 discovered in a used bookstore near Site-17 currently stored in the United States Library of Congress. Three printouts of Japanese broadcasts decoded during the Magic Crypt Analysis Project in World War II. The drawing in document 211-02, etc. No documents regarding the Foundation have been discovered as of yet. However, security has been increased as a mild informational security threat. Addendum 211-02 Recent unexplained phenomena regarding SCP-211 have provoked further study. On the 28th of March, three individual sheets of SCP-211-1 were found in SCP-211's entrance. 
Examination of these sheets proved to be Foundation Protocol Memoranda, addressed to Dr. Spinoza, the interviewer of the previously mentioned ER. Upon questioning, Spinoza, who had been at Site-17 regarding another project, noted that the notices had disappeared soon after he received them, adding that data expunged. Since this date, there have been other data security breaches involving SCP-211-1, several of which involve SCP-211 as subject material. Upgrade to Euclid status pending. Item number SCP-229 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures No electrical devices of any kind are allowed inside or within 30 meters of the containment area. Any and all personnel entering the containment area are to be clad in lead-lined clothing and helmets. Anything found to be infested by SCP-229 is to be immediately incinerated and the resulting ash and debris contained and disposed of under Protocol XJR-99. Containment area is to be composed of a hollow cube of 18 centimeter thick granite, 8 meters on a side, with a single door and airlock. These are to operate with no electrical components, and those components are to be made of wood or stone whenever possible. Any organism infested with SCP-229 is to be immediately incinerated. Any items or staff exiting the containment area must be scanned and cleared by site security. Description: SCP-229 appears to be a mass of wires and cables. Superficially, they appear to be raw copper wire, insulated ethernet cable, phone cable, power lines, and many other forms of electrical cable. The current mass weighs 94 kilograms at last measurement. SCP-229 is tentatively identified as a form of silicone-based life. SCP-229 is a highly invasive parasite, attacking anything carrying even a low electrical current. SCP-229 will grow several centimeters every hour and form connectors to attach to electrical power sources, wall socket plugs, USB connectors, etc. SCP-229 will also splice itself into power lines and existing wires if no connection is available. SCP-229 appears to feed off electricity. SCP-229 appears to go dormant when not in the presence of an electrical source. Any electrical current entering within 30 meters, no matter how small, will immediately cause SCP-229 to grow in the direction of the electricity. Questions regarding the possible intelligence and sensory organs of SCP-229 are still under investigation. SCP-229 appears to grow best on metal or plastic, but is very capable of infesting living tissue. In vertebrate animals, SCP-229 will quickly penetrate the epidermis and other tissues, attaching to and enveloping the spine. SCP-229 will then grow along nerve pathways and up into the brain attaching and infesting it within a few days. This process appears to be extremely painful and can cause very erratic behavior. When the infested subject nears death, usually from massive internal bleeding and brain damage, SCP-229 will exit the body by puncturing through the skin and attaching to any nearby structures, thus beginning the cycle again. It is theorized that SCP-229 has always been present in our ecosystem but that the technological level, and thereby the availability of electricity, was insufficient to allow its spread. With the current prevalence of wires and other electrical devices, detection can be extremely difficult. Incineration is currently the best means for SCP-229 removal. Addendum: At this time, cross-experimentation between SCP-229 and SCP-217 is allowed only with O5 approval. Item Number SCP-236 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Any and all materials leaving the containment area are to be scanned for any contamination by SCP-236. Any objects showing contamination by SCP-236 are to be immediately returned to the containment area and cleared of contamination. Personnel leaving the containment area must submit to a full physical examination and x-ray. No objects are to be left in the containment area without personnel present. Any objects appearing in the containment area are not to be touched 
until cleared by supervising personnel. Blast doors are to be opened only to allow personnel in and out of the containment area. No sudden movement or aggressive action of any kind is allowed in the containment area. Containment area is to be kept as dark as possible, with night vision goggles recommended for all interacting personnel. Should traditional lighting be necessary, lights must be turned on remotely, and a waiting period of one hour is to be observed before entry will be allowed. Description SCP-236 appears to be a swarm of near-microscopic crabs. Individuals match no known form of crustacean, and elements of their physiology appear to point to an artificial origin. SCP-236 appears to operate under a form of collective intelligence, or hive mind. This intelligence appears to grow when individual SCP-236 are in close proximity and dissipate when they are divided. Large swarms appear to exhibit predatory intelligence and become significantly more aggressive than individuals. Swarms show aptitude with problem-solving, encircling tactics, and stealth. In addition, swarms appear able to take on the physical aspects and appearance of inanimate objects, such as doors, chairs, or even complex patterns, such as those found in paintings, for extended periods of time. This mimicry is near perfect under casual observation and requires detailed observation to detect. Swarms will sometimes even destroy existing objects and replace them in what appears to be an attempt at better disguise. SCP-236 can create additional individuals from any organic matter. This includes wood, cotton, or other materials derived from an organic source. SCP-236 units appear to remove small portions of matter with their pincers, consume it, then lay small spherical eggs, which hatch into new members after 10 minutes. Juvenile SCP-236 look identical to adults, but are smaller in size and lack the chemicals used in the defensive response. Juveniles reach full adult size after 6 hours. SCP-236 individuals appear to fear light, rapid movement, or loud noises. This fear is reduced in proportion to the number of units in a swarm, but even large collectives can be startled by a sudden sound or bright light. SCP-236 that are startled while mimicking an object will rapidly break apart into individual units, which will then scatter and hide. Swarm regrouping can take up to 24 hours. When cornered or unable to escape quickly, SCP-236 units will initiate their defensive response. This entails a unit raising its pincers and then detonating with an explosion equivalent to 9.07 kilograms or 20 pounds of C4 explosive. Initial research suggests that this is the result of an internal chemical reaction involving the mixing of three normally inert chemicals. Collection of these chemicals has been problematic due to the relatively minute size of the storage chambers and the likelihood of startling SCP-236 during the procedure. SCP-236 will use humans or any other living thing as a resource, provided the swarm is of a sufficient size. Moderate-sized swarms can convert a whole human being in less than five minutes. Individual SCP-236 have also been observed entering the human body, typically while the subject is asleep, and begin to consume it from the inside out. This behavior coupled with mimicry and the defensive response, make SCP-236 very difficult to detect and contain effectively. Addendum While SCP-236 has not been observed to mimic organic life, the possibility exists for SCP-236 to develop this behavior. Notably, during testing with SCP-2366 when SCP-236 mimicked a brown bear and began to exhibit increased predatory behavior and data expunged. Such formations are to be immediately reported and testing area cleared immediately. Item Number SCP-271 Object Class Catter Special Containment Procedures SCP-271 is to be stored as long as possible in Containment Unit Exclamation Point 12 on a meter-high stone pedestal SCP-2711 which will be flooded with water and sealed off in a hollow 5-centimeter-thick sphere composed of glass saturated with iron.
permanent neodymium magnets will be mounted around the standard-sized room to suspend the sphere in air and repel unwanted intruders. The room will be lined with pyrolytic carbon to contain the magnetic field generated by the magnets. The door to the room is to be left unguarded and disguised as an ordinary janitorial closet and kept locked by an unobtrusive password box mounted in the wall down the hallway and around the corner that appears to be a thermostat. Dr. Vig is to change the password on a monthly basis. All study is to be observation only until further notice. In case of unauthorized access, electromagnets in the room are to be activated by remote to destroy the glass sphere so that recovery may be simplified. Description SCP-271 is a small disk, composition unknown but metallic in nature, a little more than 4 centimeters in diameter, and engraved with a number of symbols that may or may not represent an unknown alphabet. These symbols are infectious to their environment over time, gradually appearing as if invisibly carved into nearby objects. They are capable of escaping through any hole, however minute but have been demonstrated to be unable to penetrate non-gaseous fluids. Objects that carry the symbols for a sufficient time begin to change on a molecular level to the same material as the SCP. Both the engraving and petrification processes are extremely painful to biotic organisms. The only known method for purging the symbols is the destruction of the object, and it is not possible to do this to SCP-271 itself. At this time, both SCP-271 and SCP-2711 are thoroughly coated with the engraved symbols and seem to swim slightly. Dr. Vig and other observers have described them as looking like the far side of a heat wave, or not quite all there. The symbols also appear to have fractalized somewhat. Studies with vision-enhancing equipment have revealed miniature symbols inside and around the larger carvings on both objects. SCP-271 was a previously unknown SCP, recently acquired from a shrine belonging to the Church of the Broken God by Mobile Arm Task Force 12 when data expunged. It was previously stored in a room of its own, which documents note was to be kept sealed until the assembly was ready. The platform is original. On account of the extensive writing on the room in which it was contained, the shrine itself was pulverized. However, Due to rapid retaliation by enemy forces, the remnants of MATF-12 were forced to data expunged. Contact has been re-established, but the nature of the SCP and the enemy seekers prevent easy recovery, and it is currently considered more advisable for the SCP to remain hidden, if comparatively unprotected, than to attract attention by launching a very expensive recovery mission. MATF-12 has been ordered to conform itself into CU-12. The exclamation mark denoting their atypical existence outside of a secured SCP Foundation area. Addendum SCP-271 is not to be brought into the presence of SCP-882. Emergency Bulletin Reports from other embedded sources indicate that as of the Church is aware of CU-12 and the location of SCP-271 and is planning an imminent assault against the unit. SCP-271 is to be kept out of enemy hands at all costs. CU-12 has been ordered to mobilize and prepare for evacuation. A recovery team is being prepared for immediate deployment under the direction of Agent DuPont. A more detailed report is to follow. Item Number SCP-274 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures any buildings found to be infected with SCP-274 are to be reported immediately to a superior and the leader of Mobile Task Force Pi-1, City Slickers. MTF Pi-1 is to incinerate cases of SCP-274-1 and secure the infected buildings by forming a quarantine with a one-kilometer radius under the guise of the local police and fire department. MTF Pi-1 is to terminate any cases of SCP-274-2 through the use of high-pressure fire hoses. Civilians insisting on entering an instance of SCP-2741 are to be detained and have one Class B amnestic administered. Any apparatus used to contain or handle SCP-274 should either be incinerated or entirely composed of metal or glass 
and washed thoroughly immediately after use. The cover story for a containment breach of SCP-274 should be gang-related arson. Description SCP-274 is a paint of variable color. Buildings inflicted with SCP-274 appear to have large amounts of graffiti covering the sides of the building and often have large, disturbing designs to them. While its consistency is that of normal paint, its composition reveals it to be 28% hemoglobin, 12% gastric acid, and 60% common components consisted with Krylon brand spray paint. When SCP-274 is applied to a wall, it will begin to spread until it has covered the wall and any walls attached to it. SCP-274 is unable to spread on metal, glass, and horizontal surfaces. While SCP-274 spreads on buildings, it will convert the interior of a wall into a large mesoglea, the interior walls into a gastrodermis, and the exterior walls act as a protective shell and epidermis. Buildings coated entirely with SCP-274 will become cases of SCP-274-1. SCP-274-1 exhibits signs of life, react to stimuli, and behave in a manner similar to many species of the Anthozoa class. Buildings converted into SCP-2741 lure passing civilians by emitting noises from inside SCP-2741. Sounds of glass breaking, loud coughing, or pained whimpers have all been reported from D-Class personnel. It is currently unknown whether SCP-2741 or the SCP-2742s are responsible for this behavior as the noises stop immediately after entry. Typically, civilians will either call the police or investigate the noises themselves. As subjects search inside SCP-2741, they will be recognized as food by instances of SCP-2742, if any are present. When a victim enters a room inside SCP-2741, barring the entryway, they will immediately be suctioned into a gastrovascular cavity belonging to SCP-2741, later processing them into SCP-274 and one instance of SCP-2742. Specimens of SCP-2742 are organisms composed of SCP-274 that appear as men or women wearing a gas mask or respirator, along with a bright pastel-colored hoodie. SCP-2742 is able to support its heavy weight by its thickness and density in its membrane, which consists of 45 to 50% of the mass of SCP-2742. SCP-2742 act as nematocysts for SCP-2741 and can disguise themselves by merging into the walls. This is done by heavily compacting themselves and implanting itself into an interior wall, save for their mask, which flattens around the wall and disguises itself as standard graffiti. This behavior has proven to be a means of ambushing food for SCP-2741 and will only react when it detects something it considers a food source. SCP-2742 possesses a hinged operculum that ejects SCP-274 located in the right hand. This operculum looks identical to a normal spray can and can project SCP-274 in a similar manner. SCP-2742 will attempt to spray SCP-274 into the eyes and mouth of its victims in an attempt to incapacitate and encapsulate them. This method of attack has shown to be very painful and will blind and numb the victim from the neck down. Once tagged, the victim is placed into a gastrovascular cavity resulting in a new SCP-2742. SCP-2742 are able to duplicate themselves while inside an instance of SCP-2741 and will produce one new SCP-2742 every 24 hours. Once 12 SCP-2742 specimens reside inside one SCP-2741, further cases of SCP-2742 will leave SCP-2741 and find a new building to spray with SCP-274 while avoiding any people they may encounter. Once a building at least two kilometers away from another SCP-2741 is found, the SCP-2742 will spray SCP-274 onto the building until it has completely dehydrated itself of SCP-274 and dies, resulting in another instance of SCP-2741 
If left unchecked, it is estimated that SCP-274 could cover a large city within 20 days. Addendum 274 SCP-2741 Appearance Log Date found 01-2001 Appearance SCP-27411 is painted to resemble a large bus with the number on its side. The front of the bus has been replaced by a human-like face and the back is on fire. Bus patrons all look towards the front of the bus and do not seem to react to the fire. Date found 04-2006 Appearance SCP-27412 is painted to look as if it's crumbling apart. At the base, people are illustrated to be running away from SCP-27412, and a face can be seen forming from the falling rubble. Date found. 03-2010 Appearance SCP-27413 depicts a beach with three sharks in the water and several people running from the shore. This scene is illustrated behind a large cartoon tiki statue, which takes up most of the front of SCP-27413. Date found. 08. 2011. Appearance. SCP-27414 illustrates what is presumed to be Noah's Ark at sea. The creatures boarding the Ark do not match any known species. The Ark is depicted to have a face with several sharp teeth and eyes devoid of pupils or irises. Date found. 11, 2011. Appearance. SCP-27415 depicts several figures in level 3 biohazard suits at the base. Figures are seen fighting each other for what appears to be a bottle of hand sanitizer. Several cadavers are piled on top of one another in the background, with a large green cloud in the shape of a canine-like face emitting from them. This face is shown laughing, presumably at the people fighting. Date found. 07. 2012. Appearance. SCP-27416 is painted to resemble a mausoleum with a large human skull painted on its front. Illustrated at the base of SCP-27416 are figures suffering from advanced stages of rigor mortis. Most notable is that several figures appear to be wearing the standard issue tactical armor distributed to MTF Pi-1. Date found. 08. 2012. Appearance. SCP-27417 is decorated with the scene of MTF Pi-1 setting SCP-27417 on fire through the use of Molotov cocktails. A large depiction of SCP-2742 can be seen attacking MTF Pi-1. Date found. 08. 2012. Appearance. Data expunged. Operatives dead as a result of a large mob of SCP-2742. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.